Welcome to Learning English, a daily 30-minute program from the Voice of America. I'm Jonathan Evans. And I'm Ashley Thompson. This program is aimed at English learners, so we speak a little slower and we use words and phrases especially written for people learning English. Today on the program, you will hear from Dan Novak, Anna Mateo, and Faith Perlow. Later, you will hear The Celebrated Jumping Frog of Calaveras County by Mark Twain on American Stories. But first, here is Dan Novak. The major hit movie Top Gun was released in 1986. The film was based on a true story about fighter pilots in training and was published in a magazine three years earlier. Paramount Pictures bought the rights to the story written by Ehud Yone and made the film to great success. Now, the wife and son of Yone are suing Paramount about its new movie, Top Gun Maverick. Shosh Yone and Yuval Yone brought the legal action to a California federal court Monday. They say that they control the rights to Ehud's story and that they became its owners again on January 24, 2020. The lawsuit accuses Paramount of releasing the new film without the rights to do so legally. A spokesperson for Paramount Pictures said in a statement that the claims are without standing. Yone's story centered on Yogi and his friend Possum as they trained to become pilots for the United States Navy. It was published in the May 1983 issue of California Magazine. Soon after, Paramount Pictures bought the movie rights to the piece. Top Gun was released in 1986 and went on to become the top-selling film of the year. The lawsuit says that Paramount had known since 2018 that the Yones planned to recover the rights. The lawsuit says the mother and son sent a cease and desist order in a letter to Paramount last month. A cease and desist order demands that someone stop an action. Paramount answered the Yone's order. The company said that the film had been mostly completed by January 24, 2020, and that it was not influenced by the magazine story. The Yones argue that the new film would not have been developed without Ehud's story. And the lawsuit says that Top Gun Maverick did not finish filming until May 2021, more than a year after the Yones recovered the property. The Top Gun sequel has been in development for years. Production and release was delayed many times, most recently and extensively as a result of the pandemic. The film opened in theaters on May 27th, and has spent two weeks as the top-selling movie. It has already made close to $560 million in theater admission sales worldwide. After more than 300 years, a woman who was found guilty of using witchcraft in Salem, Massachusetts, has been pardoned. Witchcraft is traditionally described by some people as using supernatural powers, often involving evil spirits. Some people might define modern-day witchcraft differently. On May 26, Massachusetts state lawmakers officially cleared Elizabeth Johnson, Jr. In 1693, Johnson was found guilty of witchcraft, and sentenced to death. Her trial was part of the famous Salem Witch Trials, which started in 1692, when Massachusetts was a colony of Britain. Johnson was never executed, 
but unlike other people who were accused of witchcraft, she was never officially pardoned. Last year, lawmakers agreed to reconsider her case after an eighth grade class at a Massachusetts middle school took up her cause. Students at North Andover Middle School researched the legislative steps needed to clear Johnson's name. In a statement, their teacher, Carrie Lapierre, praised her students for taking on the long overlooked issue of justice. For this wrongly convicted woman, the teacher added that passing this legislation will show the students the importance of helping someone who cannot help themselves. The experience, she said, also can teach the students that they have a strong voice. Here, the word voice means having the right to express a wish. Choice or opinion. State Senator Diana DiZaglio introduced the legislation, which was then added to a budget bill and approved. DiZaglio said, "We will never be able to change what happened to victims like Elizabeth, but at the very least, we can set the record straight." A group called Witches of Massachusetts Bay told the Associated Press that Johnson is the last accused witch to be cleared. The group's goal is to study and record the history and stories of the witch hunts that took place in that state. Massachusetts State Senator Joan Lovely said, "For three hundred years." Elizabeth Johnson Jr. was without a voice; her story lost to the passages of time. Twenty people from Salem and neighboring towns were executed, and many others were accused of witchcraft during the incident, which began in 1692. Historians say that people who accused others of being witches did so for many reasons. These included superstition, fear of disease and strangers, and jealousy. Nineteen people were hanged, and one man was crushed to death with rocks. Johnson was twenty-two when she was caught up. In the witchcraft accusations, she was put on trial and sentenced to hang. But the colony's governor, William Phipps, threw out her punishment as the injustice of the trials became clear. Over more than three hundred years, many suspects were officially cleared, including Johnson's mother. But for some reason, Elizabeth Johnson's name was not included in the legislative attempts to correct the record. Unlike others who were wrongly accused, Johnson never had children who could have cleared her name. Dizaglio said Elizabeth's story and struggle continue to greatly resonate today. She added. While we've come a long way since the horrors of the witch trials, women today still all too often find their rights challenged and concerns dismissed. Hello, this week on Ask a Teacher, we will answer a question from A Ping about the difference between mission and assignment in one of our stories. Dear teacher, I read an article by VOA Learning English titled "After Helping Fight COVID-19, U.S. Military Plans for Next Pandemic." There are two words: mission and assignment. Can you tell me the difference between these two words? Thanks.
Aping Dear Aping, thank you for your question. Let us look at these two words within the story. We will start with the word mission and then move on to assignment. Firstly, we have the word mission. Let us look at how the word mission is used in the story. The United States military deployed about 24,000 troops to help state and local governments across the country fight COVID-19. That mission has ended, at least for now. And officials are seeking to learn from the experiences of service members who took part in the COVID-19 mission. The patient is going to get the treatment he needs. That was the mission. The word mission in these three sentences from the story refer to the U.S. military's deployment of troops to help local governments fight COVID-19. In this way, we can think of mission as an important operation, effort, or task. The U.S. military defines mission as a task together with a purpose. This may be an overall mission or larger goal, like to defend the United States, or it might be a specific task, like helping local governments to fight COVID-19. So we can think of mission as a larger goal or objective. Many organizations and even individual people use the word mission. For example, the charity's mission is to provide shelter and food to young people without homes. My mission for the summer is to take an hour-long walk every day. Next, we have the word assignment. Let us look at how we use it in the story. The last military medical team deployed for the pandemic finished its assignment last week at the University of Utah Hospital. In this sentence, assignment refers to a specific place where the task or mission is carried out, like the University of Utah Hospital. Military units and other employees might have different assignments or jobs in different places. This is how we can think of the word assignment, like a specific job in a specific place. To summarize, we use the word mission to talk about the overall goal or purpose for an organization or an individual. We use the word assignment when talking about individual jobs in a specific place. The two words can overlap when a person's assignment, individual job, is helping carry out the mission or larger overall goal. Please let us know if these explanations and examples have helped you, Aping. What question do you have about American English? Send us an email at learningenglish at voanews.com. And that's Ask a Teacher. I'm Faith Perlow. Our story is called The Celebrated Jumping Frog of Calaveras County. It was written by Mark Twain. Here is Shep O'Neill with the story. A friend of mine in the East asked me to visit old Simon Wheeler to ask about my friend's friend, Leonidas W. Smiley. I did as my friend asked me to do, and this story is the result. 
I found Simon Wheeler sleeping by the stove in the ruined mining camp of Angels. I saw that he was fat and had no hair and had a gentle and simple look upon his peaceful face. He woke up and gave me good day. I told him a friend had asked me to find out about a friend named Leonidas W. Smiley, who he heard was at one time living in Angel's Camp. I added that if Mr. Wheeler could tell me anything about this Leonidas W. Smiley, I would feel a great responsibility to him. Simon Wheeler forced me into a corner with his chair and began telling me this long story. He never smiled, he never frowned, but all through the endless story there was a feeling of great seriousness and honesty. This showed me plainly that he thought the heroes of the story were men of great intelligence. I let him go on in his own way and never stopped him once. This is the story Simon Wheeler told. Leonidas W. Bleu. Well, there was a man here once, by the name of Jim Smiley, in the winter of 1849, or maybe it was the spring of 1850. Anyway, he was the strangest man. He was always making money on anything that turned up, if he could get anybody to try to make money on the other side. And if he could not do that, he would change sides. And he was lucky, uncommon lucky. He most always was a winner. If there was a dog fight, he would try to win money on it. If there was a cat fight, he would take the risk. If there was a chicken fight, he would try to win money on it. Why, if there was two birds sitting on a fence, he would want you to decide which one would fly first so he could win money. Lots of the boys here have seen Nat Smiley and can tell you about him. Why, it did not matter to him. He would try to make money on anything. He was the most unusual man. Parson Walker's wife was very sick once for a long time, and it seemed as if they were not going to save her. But one morning he come in, and Smiley asked him how his wife was, and he said she was better, thank God. And Smiley, before he thought, says, Well, I risk my money. She will not get well. And Smiley had a little small dog. To look at the dog, you would think he was not worth anything but to sit around and look mean and look for a chance to steal something. But as soon as there was money... He was a different dog. Another dog might attack and throw him around two or three times. Then, all of a sudden, Smiley's dog would grab that other dog by his back leg and hang on till the man said it was over. Smiley always come out the winner on that dog, at least until he found a dog once that did not have any back legs. The dog's legs had been cut off in a machine. Well, the fighting continued long enough, and the money was gone. Then, when Smiley's dog come to make a grab the other dog's back legs, he saw in a minute how there was a problem. The other dog was going to win, and Smiley's dog looked surprised and did not try to win the fight anymore. He gave Smiley a look that said he was sorry for fighting a dog that did not have any back legs for him to hold, which he needed to win the fight. Then Smiley's dog walked away, laid down, and died. He was a good dog, and would have made a name for himself if he had lived, for he had intelligence. 
It always makes me feel sorry when I think of that last fight of his and the way it turned out. Well, this Smiley had rats and chickens and cats and all of them kind of things. You could not get anything for him to risk money on, but he would match you. He caught a frog one day and took him home and said he was going to educate the frog. And so he never done nothing for three months but sit in his backyard and teach that frog to jump. And you bet you he did teach him too. He would give him a little hit from behind. And the next minute, you would see that frog dancing in the air and then come down all on his feet and all right, like a cat. Smiley got him so the frog was catching flies and he would catch one of those insects every time. Smiley said all a frog wanted was education and he could do almost anything. And I believe him. Why, I have seen him set Daniel Webster down here on this floor. Daniel Webster was the name of the frog. And sing out, Flies, Daniel, flies. And quicker than you could shut your eyes, that frog would jump straight up and catch a fly off the table. Then he would fall down on the floor again, like a ball of dirt, and start rubbing the side of his head with his back foot, as if he had no idea he had been doing any more than any frog might do. You never seen a frog so honest and simple as he was, for all he was so skilled. And when it come to jumping, he could get over more ground in one jump than any animal of his kind that you ever saw. Smiley was very proud of his frog, and people who had traveled and been everywhere all said he was better than any frog they had ever seen. Well, one day a stranger came in and says to Smiley, What might be that you have got in the box? And Smiley says, is only just a frog. And the man took it and looked at it careful and turned it round this way and that and says, Hmm, so it is. Well, what is he good for? Well, Smiley says, easy and careless, he can outjump any frog in Calaveras County. The man took the box again and took another long look and gave it back to Smiley and says, well, I don't see anything about that frog that is any better than any other frog. Maybe you don't, Smiley says. Maybe you understand frogs, and maybe you don't. Anyways, I will risk $40 and bet you that he can jump farther than any frog in Calaveras County. And the man studied a minute. Well, I'm only a stranger here, and I do not have a frog. But if I had a frog, I would risk my money on it. And then Smiley says, That's all right. If you will hold my box a minute, I will go and get you a frog. And so the man took the box and put up his $40 and sat down. To wait. He sat there a long time thinking and thinking. Then he got the frog out of the box. He filled its mouth full of bullets used to kill small birds. Then he put the frog on the floor. Now Smiley had caught another frog and gave it to the man and said, Now sit him next to Daniel and I will give the word. Then Smiley says, One, two, three, go, 
and Smiley and the other man touched the frogs. The new frog jumped. Dan'l just lifted up his body, but could not move at all. He was planted like a building. Smiley was very surprised and angry, too, but he did not know what the problem was. The other man took the money and started away, and when he was going out the door, he looked back and said, Well, I don't see anything about that frog that is any better than any other frog. Smiley stood looking down at Dan'l a long time, and at last says, I wonder what in the nation happened to that frog. I wonder if there's something wrong with him. And he picked up Dan'l and turned him upside down, and out came a whole lot of bullets. And Smiley was the angriest man. He set the frog down and took out after that man, but he never caught him. Now, Simon Wheeler heard his name called and got up to see what was wanted. He told me to wait, but I did not think that more stories about Jim Smiley would give me any more information about Leonidas W. Smiley, and so I started to walk away. At the door, I met Mr. Wheeler returning, and he started talking again. Well, this here Smiley had a yellow cow with one eye and no tail. However, lacking both time and interest, I did not wait to hear about the cow. I just left. You have heard the American story, The Celebrated Jumping Frog of Calaveras County. Your storyteller was Shep O'Neill. The producer was Lawan Davis. This story was written by Mark Twain and adapted into special English by Karen Leggett.